As a boy growing up in southern Indiana, Elmer Joseph Ritter simply knew he wanted to be a priest. After 11 years at St. Meinrad Seminary, he graduated summa cum laude. And on that same day, in May 1917, was ordained a priest by Bishop Joseph Chartrand of Indianapolis. Five years later, he received an honorary doctorate of theology from Pope Pius XI. In March 1933, he was ordained Auxiliary Bishop of Indianapolis at age 40, the youngest Catholic bishop in the United States. One year later, he was appointed the seventh bishop of Indianapolis. He also reversed his first and second names and officially became Bishop Joseph Elmer Ritter. The segregation of black and white children in schools was a common practice of the day, and Bishop Ritter courageously launched a series of actions intended to correct the issue. School by school, over a period of six years beginning in 1937, he ordered that black children be admitted. The Ku Klux Klan protested and even threatened his personal well-being, but he was undeterred. In 1943, he simply mandated all Catholic schools accept all children, regardless of color. These actions occurred a full decade before the historic Brown v. Topeka Board of Education case in 1954, which brought the issue of segregation to the forefront of American culture. In 1944, Indianapolis was elevated to the status of an archdiocese, and Ritter was installed its first archbishop, again at that moment, the youngest archbishop in America. Soon he was faced with more unexpected challenges. In late 1946, following the death of John Cardinal Glennon, Ritter was appointed the fourth Archbishop of St. Louis, at that time the eighth largest city in the country. Emboldened by his experiences in Indianapolis, he acted quickly on the issue of integration. By late summer of 1947, Archbishop Ritter announced a total end to racial segregation in all Catholic schools throughout the archdiocese. Over 700 white Catholics threatened to sue the new archbishop, claiming his directive was a violation of state law. He responded swiftly with the threat of automatic excommunication from the church for anyone participating in such actions against him or the church. Problem solved. During his 21-year tenure in the St. Louis Archdiocese, Ritter built 41 new parishes, 16 high schools, and completed construction of the Cardinal Glennon Memorial Children's Hospital. He was a strong advocate for students with disabilities and provided many resources for them. He was a strong advocate for the elderly and converted the old DeSoto Hotel to a home for aging Catholics. He was a strong advocate for the foreign missions and sent archdiocesan priests to South America. The group was the first ever directly established and supported by a single American diocese. He was a strong advocate for those of other faiths, and in belief of individual rights and equality among peoples, he said, All Christians throughout the world are essential to bring out the teachings of the Church. In this spirit of ecumenism, Ritter was the first archbishop to give a major address in a Protestant seminary in America. And on one occasion, after a Jewish rabbi was denied permission to purchase a site for a synagogue in the city center, Archbishop Ritter quietly purchased the needed property for him, complete with the needed city approvals for construction of a church. Pope John XXIII called a rarely held ecumenical council in 1959 to be called the Second Vatican Council. In January 1961, one year before the council's first session, John XXIII elevated Archbishop Ritter to the ecclesiastical rank of cardinal. 
As a new member of the College of Cardinals, Ritter assisted in reviewing the relationship between the Roman Catholic Church and the modern world. He helped create 16 documents that redefined the Catholic Church as we know it today. At session three of the Council, he advocated for a relationship with the Jewish people, for ecumenism and religious liberty, for broad acceptance and recognition of lay people, for missionary work, for Catholic education to include scientific inquiry and students of all religions, and for mixed marriages of religions. In August 1964, Cardinal Ritter was the primary advocate for switching from Latin to English for Catholics in America. The nationwide celebration of the Mass in English officially occurred on November 29, 1964, the first Sunday of Advent. Fifty years later, in 2014, when Archbishop Joseph Edward Kurtz visited the Cardinal Ritter birthplace in New Albany, Indiana, he described Joseph Ritter as an embodiment of humility, loving kindness, and simplicity, and compared his ability to attract and touch people's lives to Pope Francis. Cardinal Ritter's lifetime of ecumenical outreach is portrayed on a grand mosaic in the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis. However, the extent of his outreach is best reflected in the list of those attending his funeral in June 1967. Present were four cardinals, ten archbishops, forty-eight bishops, four abbots, and at least fifty Protestant, Jewish, and Orthodox leaders. The legacy of Cardinal Joseph Ritter is ever-present today as continued efforts are made in racial equality, ecumenism, and evangelization of the faith. His belief in the equality of every soul before Almighty God is unwavering and everlasting. To learn more about Cardinal Ritter, we recommend Joseph Elmer Cardinal Ritter. His Life and Times by Monsignor Nicholas A. Schneider.